G'day guys. Today I'm going to take you through a really simple tutorial into set, in how to set up a honey trap file uh, inside your computer. Uh, the whole idea of this is to detect if someone's accessed your files. Now that could be either in terms of someone putting a remote access tool and stealing files and downloading them from you and then opening them somewhere else. Or it could be, you know, someone you live with who is gaining unauthorized access to your computer and accessing your files. Now note, I'm putting this tutorial out there for what I see is only the defensive um, cybersecurity side of it, i.e. you trying to protect your own stuff and identify if you've had a data breach from your computer. Uh, don't use it for other uses. I'm sure you can think of some, just don't. It's not worth it. All right, so the idea of this file is it will send you a notification the moment uh, someone accesses a file um, now, I'll take you through each of the steps to create it. There's a little bit of human engineering that, um, that has to go into it, but I'll explain that when we get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, go create a lab, uh, uh, go create a uh, account on a site called Grabify. Um, Grabify is an IP logging site. Uh, what it will do is when certain URLs are opened uh, that it tracks, um, it will then send notification uh, to you uh, that that URL has been opened. Um, you can do it in such a way too, uh, so that the other person doesn't know. Uh, so for example, when the file that we will put together today, uh, you can have it set up so they don't know that it's uh, been tracked. Um, but if this is all about you trying to stop people and detect, uh, then it doesn't matter if people know. So anyway, so to get in it, create an account. And the reason you need to create an account is so that you can get email notifications that uh, the file link has been accessed and the file has been accessed. So all right, so once you've uh, logged in, you wanna to come to the main page and then scroll down to a bit that says Grabify IP Locator, create or track URLs. Now, to actually track something, you need it to target something. So in this case, um, I've created a very, very simple picture uh, uploaded onto um, IMG. Um, and guys, feel free to use the link. I'll actually put the link for this picture down below if you want to use it. I don't care. It was put there to be used, so feel free to use it or make your own and upload them into here. So once we've copied across the address, we plug the address into here uh, and then go create URL. Now, of course, it's going to do one of these things. And let me see, that's a plane, that's a plane, that's a plane, that's a train. Um, all right, and it's now created the URL. So because we've created an account, we can now get email notification and smart logger if you want that as well. Um, be sure to put a note down here too. That way, when you actually open this up to have a look at the tracking stuff later down the like if it's been opened, uh, you've got to note to yourself to say, you know, it was on this computer sort of thing, home PC, whatever. Um, one of the other bits you will want to do, and this is part of that social engineering piece I was talking about earlier, is you want to change this URL. So this is the URL that we're going to actually access um, and use inside our program. But we don't want that because um, this is really obvious to anybody that knows anything about this sort of stuff, that they will know that this link um, will track, will produce a tracking ping, so to speak. All right, so come up here to this bit that says select domain name, uh, and then select any one of these. So I don't know, image share dot best. Uh, it's a picture, so let's call it a dot jpg. And now I've got a new link. So this is our uh, tracking link here, which has then which has come off our original image here and this is our tracking link. So anytime we open or someone opens this link, uh, it'll send an email notification to us. So, right, so we want to copy that. So we copy that uh, and then go into a Word doc. Uh, and I've just so happened to have prepared one ready for this earlier on. Uh, so inside our Word doc, we want to go to insert uh, and then along to this little button down here, It'll take a couple of seconds, depending on how slow your computer is. Then go to field. 
and then scroll down to where it says include picture paste your link into there and then click data not stored with document uh, what this then means is each time this field is refreshed it will access that tracking link that we put inside there so now we save that um, and it might take a couple of seconds uh, but this will then access our picture while we're waiting for that to come up uh, if you come across up to this box here and just go into visual basic editor uh, and paste the following code into it so what this code does is it makes sure that on startup um, update fields is set to true uh, and then on document open it will open well it'll update the fields uh, and this one also puts up a nice little message box to say this document is protected so let's close out of that now this is where the social engineering piece comes up and there's two parts to this so firstly we want to save this document um, as a dot matrix as a um, wait sorry as a word doc with matrix uh, macros enabled uh, so I'm just going to save it in a random spot on my computer wherever I want it just ignore me for one second and it's a dot uh, doc dot docm so it's a macro enabled document okay guys so we're at the point now we've got to consider the social engineering part of this tutorial uh, and what I mean by that is very simply if someone's accessing your files whether it be someone who's remotely accessing it so hacking into your system in some way shape or form um, or somebody that you live with or someone you know is accessing your computer without you know without your knowledge uh, you need to make the file attractive for them to open so you need to understand a little bit as to I guess the who so to speak now don't get me wrong you can create multiple of these files you can copy the file three or four times name it a different thing if you want a wider net to catch more things but think about it so if it's someone that's accessing your computer remotely they're going to want bank passwords they're going to want seed uh, seed words for crypto uh, crypto wallets um, they're going to want personal information that sort of stuff so name it things like that so for example bank passwords could be a name to the file or it could be crypto seed word or crypto wallet seed word Whereas if you're, if you're living with someone, then it could be things like diary or whatever. So have a think about who you actually think is going to be accessing this file in terms of the unwanted access uh, and work it up as uh, accordingly. Also, you notice guys, I put this bit in here that says um, enable macros to show password. You change this depending on what it is. Um, because you want whoever opens this file to enable macros if they are not already enabled. If they're already enabled, Bonza, it'll come up. The message box will come up. So just to show you what I mean, yes, I want to save this out now. I am now going to actually open this. Um, and I'll show you what comes up. So this is, this is the bit that I'm talking about. So the first time that I've reopened this file on this computer, it's now come up saying, do you wish to enable macros? So yes. And now it's come up like so. So it reopened the file with macros on. The fact that it now has said document is protected. Um, if you look back at our code, that means that this field has been updated. Uh, and interestingly enough, and quite expectedly, um, I've just got an email telling me that someone has now opened this file. That was the email right there. Um, and now, that should now be automatic. So I'm just gonna open it one last time just to show you what I mean. And it's opened, unfortunately, guys. Sorry, my other on my other screen. 
but it has indeed automatically opened up um, and accessed that tracking link. Um, you'll note too, when you open the app up yourselves, uh, it'll actually display the IP address that it's been accessed from. Uh, so you're then able, when you, for example, get home um, to work out, just check your own IP address. If it's your IP address, then the file's been accessed on your computer. If it's not your IP address, then it's been accessed somewhere else. Um, the big beauty of this sort of file and why I think it's a really good idea to have something like this on your computer uh, is it allows you to mitigate damage. Uh, so for example, if someone somehow gains remote access to your computer and they have remote access to your computer, say for months, then it's really, really bad. Um, there's a lot of information they can gather. They could potentially key log, so they have passwords to multiple stuff. The damage could be significant. However, if someone has access to your computer, accesses one of these files, it immediately enables you to take further action uh, to stop further uh, data loss or financial loss or whatever it is, depending on what your system um, has on it. All right, guys, so I really hope this has been helpful. Um, I'll put the code bits down below in the comments so you can have a look at the code, have a think about how you can use this file for your own uses. Um, I'm gonna put together some other different types of honey trap files, um, but Word is probably the easiest and first one to start off with um, because as you saw, see, it takes a couple of minutes to set up and then you know, you've got a little bit more peace of mind. Um, if you like this video, like it and subscribe, it helps out. Um, if you have requests for other videos in this, like in this vein that you wanna see, how to do some of these things, um, hit us up with a comment or send us an email. The email is on um, the main page uh, from this channel's YouTube. But guys, have yourselves a really good and safe day out there.